The moment we see a person doing evil, we should ask him to stop it and enjoin the people towards the good. But unfortunately, we Muslims, we are not doing our duty. If we do not do the hour, if we do not enjoy what is good for what is wrong, we are fit to be called Puntum Khaira Ummati. And the Holy Quran mentions in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 143, that we have made you a community justly balanced, the middlemost community, Ummati Wasta, so that you may be a witness over the nation and the messenger will be a witness over you. It's the duty of every Muslim, the whole Ummah, to be a witness over the other people, over the other nations. And the beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, will be a witness over us. The other verse of the Holy Quran, I quoted in the beginning of my talk, was from Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9. Surah Tawbah happens to be the most militant surah of the Holy Quran. Why do I say that Surah Tawbah is the most militant surah of the Holy Quran? Because it is the only surah in the whole Quran which does not start with the beautiful formula Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Otherwise, each and every chapter besides Surah Tawbah all the other 130 chapters of the Holy Quran start with a beautiful formula, Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. For example, Bismillah rahman rahim Qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas. Bismillah rahman rahim Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq. Bismillah rahman rahim Qul huwallahu ahad. Every surah starts with a beautiful formula, Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. But Surah Tawbah does not start with this beautiful formula. Why? <coughs> because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you read the first few verses, verse number one to four, there is a treaty between the Muslims and the pagans of Makkah, a peace treaty. And this peace treaty was unilaterally broken by the mushriks of Makkah, by the pagans of Makkah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them a warning, verse number 4 and verse number 5. He says that if you do not put things back within four months, then there will be a declaration of war. If you do not put things back in four months, there is a declaration of war. And Allah says in verse number 5, that after the four forbidden months are over, wherever you find these mushrikes, wherever you find this pagan, slay them in every stadium of war. But if they ask for forgiveness, you may let them go. But Allah is giving a warning. Whenever any warning is given, but natural, you have to be firm, you have to be militant. For example, if you are walking with your wife on the road, but I am walking with my wife or my sister on the road, and suppose there is a hooligan who snatches the handbag of your sister or of your wife and he runs away. But natural, you will chase the hooligan. And the moment you catch him, you will not say, Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. You will not say, Assalamu alaikum, may peace be on you. You will say, Hey, Mr. Give the handbag or break your arm. Hey, Mr. Give the handbag or break your neck. You have to be firm. You have to be militant. In the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He gives a warning to the mushriks of Makkah, Bismillah is uncalled for. Therefore, I say, the Surah Tawbah is the most militant Surah of the Holy Quran. But by the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the time He reaches verse number 23 and 24, we Muslims, we are in the firing line. We Muslims, we are in the firing line. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing as Muslims, 
in Surah Tawbah chapter number 9 verse number 24 by saying, Kul imkana abaukum, say whether it be for your father, wa abnaukum, or your sons, wa iswanakum, or your brothers, wa azwajukum, or your spouses, your wives, or your husbands, wa ashiratukum, or your relatives. And I say, what are your considerations? Your father, your sons, your brothers, your spouses, your relatives, what are your considerations? Otherwise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 27-24, that after worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the next duty is to be kind to your parents. And Allah says that I have ordained to you that you worship none but Allah and that you be kind to your parents. But at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Surah Nisa chapter number 4, verse number 134, that, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amin, O you who believe, stand out firmly for justice and witness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if you have to go against yourself, against your parents, against your kith and kin, or for the rich or poor, for Allah protects both. For justice, you even have to go against yourself or your parents. Otherwise, you have to always respect and love your parents. So Allah says in Surah Tawbah chapter number 9 verse number 24, what are your considerations? Your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your wife, your relatives, what are your considerations? And Allah continues, The wealth that you have amassed, the business in which you deal, the dwellings in which you delight, the house in which you live. Allah says, what are your considerations? The business? Some people may say, no, if I do dawa, then, then the non-Muslim customers will not come to my business. They will not come to my shop. What are your considerations? The wealth that you have amassed? The house in which you live? Allah says in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 261 that if you sow one grain in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will give you seven years, each year bearing hundred corns, hundred grains. That means if you sow one grain or one corn in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will give you seven hundred grains or seven hundred corns. Imagine, seven hundred times profit. If you calculate in business terminology, it is 70,000 percent profit. I want to know which business, in which business will you get 70,000 percent profit? Allah promises you and Allah continues and says, I will give you many fold more. So if you put your wealth in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah promises you no less than 700 times, 70,000 percent profit. So Allah asks you, what are your considerations? Your father, your sons, your brothers, your wives, your relatives, your wealth, your business, the houses in which you live, and Allah continues. If you love all these things more than Allah, His Rasul, and doing jihad in the way of Allah, Allah says, for the you wait. Allah is asking us Muslims to wait. And believe me, we are waiting, sitting on our backside doing nothing. What does Allah mean when He says, What does Allah mean in the Holy Quran when He says, Wait? What does He mean? For example, if suppose a teacher says in the classroom that, Look out for a word in a book, when, a, when the students are reading in a book. And when the teacher says, look out for a word, the teacher actually means you should look in the book, not look out of the book. It exactly means the opposite. That's the genius of the language. When the teacher says, look out for the word, she actually means you have to look in the book, not look out of the book. Similarly, suppose there's a senior student in the school who is bullying a junior student. And when the senior student is going to the junior student, the junior student says that you wait till I get my elder brother. 
at the end of the day, happens to be 